Shalom Israel. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect. And this lesson is going to go into um, Psalms 34 and 12 in regards to the precept that the uh, brother Yashalam, the elder brother Yashalam from the GMS New Jersey, I mean, um, New York camp, GMS Watchman. He quoted it in his uh, video, in his lesson, entitled U.S. Government to Use War Tactics Against Domestic Extremists. And um, also going into uh, the other brother, Yashawamba, Remnant Save 144 Ba, and his lesson entitled Persecution. All right. And um, through the spirit, some time went by. I had, you know, some things, some errands to run. And then I seen the Apostle, I just started watching the Apostle Tahar's lesson. As you see, you got next E. And, um, A, it's not supposed to be fear. This persecution to where this devil is going to push it, that we're the, you know, enemy number one. As it says right here, and Salaki, I said I was going to, I want to get in a, uh, my sword. So this is Psalms chapter 37. Verse 12, the wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. Okay, the word gnash meaning grind. And when you grind something, all right, that's that normally takes longer to uh, devour, you know. Um, so this devil is, 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 is you know, what I'm saying. He's going to make it tough for us. He's going to make it really tough for us. Those that's pushing Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. When you read in the scriptures, anybody that didn't bow down to him or his decree, and what is his decree in this day and age, to take the jab, so eventually it's going to be to take the RFID chip, and we're not with, uh, we're not with neither of the two. So he's going to push it to where we are enemy number one. He's going to push the whole world against us. Like the wicked Haman in the book of Esther. Like Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniels. Okay. And um, they're going to make it to where they got to come down upon us with such great wrath. Again, going into the, uh, Brother Yashalam's video. All right. Esau is going to use war tactics against domestic extremists. And when you look into um, Project Megiddo, it speaks about how the FBI, let me see. It's like it, Project. Project Megiddo, right? When you go into it, it says, uh, it was a report research and written by the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation under Director Lewis Free, released on October 20th, 1999, the report named followers of white supremacy, Christian identity, and American militia movement, black Hebrew Israelites, and apocalyptic cults as potential terrorists who might become violent in reaction to the new millennium. Okay. And it goes into... um. What's it? I'm trying to think. Was it Project Megiddo? What was the other one? Um, and mind you, this has been in the works for centuries. 10, 20 years. You know? And this is... um. Let me see. I'll just read into it. So it says, For over 4,000 years, Megiddo, a hill in northern Israel, has been a site of many battles. Ancient cities were established there to serve as a fortress on the plain of Jezreel to guard a mountain pass. As Megiddo was built and rebuilt, 
one city upon the other, a mound or hill was formed. The Hebrew word Armageddon means hill of Megiddo. In English, the word has come to represent battle itself. The last book in the New Testament of the Bible designates Armageddon as the assembly point in the apocalyptic setting of God's final and conclusive battle against evil. You know, and through the spirit, by this devil taking us down, it's his final and conclusive battle against evil. All right, because as, as we're going to read, he's coming against all those who don't follow his new world order. Okay, him thinking himself to be God. The name Megiddo is an apt title for a project that analyzes those who believe the year 2000 will usher in the year of the world, the end of the world, and who are willing to perpetrate acts of violence to bring that end about. And um, as a matter of fact, during the time of 9-11, the apostles always, you know, they talk about it from time to time of how these devils came down upon them um, with great force surrounding the school that they had in Connecticut. Okay. So it says the report's purpose was to warn other domestic law enforcement agencies to the potential for extremist criminal activity in the United States by individuals or domestic groups who attach special significance to the year 2000. The report also stated the threat, the threat posed by extremists as a result of perceived events associated with the year 2000 is very real. Um... The volatile mix of apocalyptic religious and New World Order conspiracy theories may produce violent acts aimed at uh, precipitating the end of the world as prophesied in the Bible. Okay. So this is talking about us. All right. We're the one, main ones that's talking about what he's planning on doing. That it, 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 has, it has sinister uh, uh, motives to it. You know, and we're warning the people. Not violently, you know, even though we may use rude speech, it's not violent. We tell you that the Lord is going to come back and get physical. Okay? And when the Lord gets physical, he's going to put the spirit on some of us to a hey, wreck shop with him. But we're, we of ourselves won't do anything. It says the groups named as potential violent, potentially violent were biblically driven cults. Militias, adherents of racist belief systems such as Christian identity and uh, Waltonism and other radical domestic extremists. The report ends by discussing the possibility of terrorist attacks in the city of Jerusalem, saying the extreme terrorist fringes of Christianity, Judaism and Islam are all present in the United States. Thus, millennial violence in Jerusalem could conceivably lead to violence in the United States as well. You know, and um, I'm trying to remember. I, I thought it was Project Megiddo. Let me see. COINTELPRO. That's what it was. Okay. So it says COINTELPRO is a series of covert and illegal projects conducted by the uh, U.S. United States Federal Bureau of Investigation and that's availing, infiltrating discrediting and disrupting domestic American political organizations you know and this devil has definitely what we see through the spirit that he has you know his minions all right infiltrated within the different Israelite one westers as you will this is why you have certain so-called Israelite teachers telling you to take the jab all right telling you you know demonizing the chip demonizing prophecy Okay, so he is already, as the brother went into, he has already, he's already using war tactics, but instead of psychological, you know, or, or through infiltration, he's going to actually get physical, you know. So it says, uh, FBI records show COINTELPRO resources, targeted groups, and individuals the FBI deems subversive including feminist organizations, the uh, the Communist Party, USA, anti-Vietnam war organizers, um, activists of civil rights movement, you know, all movements against, again, we go into the scriptures, anything against his, uh, his society, you know, what he deems as correct. Anything against that he has to go. 
But of course, us being Hebrew Israelites, we're worried about what he calls the Black Hebrew Israelite movement. All right. Now it says, um, activists of civil rights movements or Black Power movement. All right, which would be considered the same because they call us Black Hebrew Israelites. E.G. Martin Luther King. Going to show you that this man was set up. The Nation of Islam and the Black Panther Party, environmentalists and animal rights organizations, the American Indian Movement, independent movements such as Puerto Rican independent groups like the Young Lords, and a variety of organizations that were part of the New Left and unrelated groups such as the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> You know, and um, this devil was about to come down having full force. There was actually a episode on the show Vice going into, um, you know, they were going into the different uh, America's worst hate groups or something like that. And guess who they had on there? They had General Yohanna talking about black people, the same guy telling you to take the jabs. And they also had this one guy. I can't remember his name. Let me see. Go oh, well, and I can find it. Remember the name of that sh man, fuck. This one. Inside the FBI hunt for black identity extremists. You know, when you watch this show, it shows you it was like four in the morning. They had SWAT, they had all types of different um they had all types of different, uh, you know, CIA. All of them was out there just to pick up this one man. So that's what it's, uh, that's how this devil is going to come down. Okay. So reading back at Psalms 34 and 12, the wicked plot of against the just and gnash of upon him with his teeth. All right. But when he comes down, the scriptures say what? The Lord shall laugh at him for he seeth. That his day is coming. Okay. And how is the Lord going to laugh at him? He's going to laugh at him through us. When he gives us that spiritual power. Alright. This is Isaiah chapter 59. Verse. Uh, what is that? Yeah, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of Yahweh from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. All right. When, you know, this devil gets carnal. The spirit of Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. Okay. That word standard is a way is to flee or to escape. Okay. Some, some of us, for some of us, it may be through spiritual power, as he told his apostles. After that, ye have received the Holy Spirit, ye shall receive power. Acts 1 and 8. Okay. The Lord also said in the book of Isaiah. All right. Isaiah was at Isaiah 41. All right. Isaiah 41. And, um. Eleven. Behold, all they that will incense against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Okay? When you laugh at someone, that means when you laugh at someone that's trying to come against you, that means that you're not afraid of them. 
All right. That means that you have you have something that, you know, um, they can't come against. All right. So it says, behold, all they that were instanced against thee. In other words, though that those that Nash, you know, were uh, hell bent on taking you down shall be ashamed and confounded. All right, humiliated, <laughs> you know, but the Lord has to make it look like an unfair fight, you know, to where his power is known throughout the earth. You know, when you go into um, the book of first Maccabees. Um, and even in the book of Exodus, it speaks about how the army of Pharaoh came down upon Moses and, and the Israelites. All right, let me see if I can find that. Yeah, this is 1 Maccabees 4 and 6. But as soon as it was day, Judas shewed himself in the plain with 3,000 men, who nevertheless had neither armor nor sword to their minds. And they saw the camp of the heathen, that it was strong and well harnessed, and compassed about with horsemen, and these were expert of war. And when you read throughout the book of 1 Maccabees, again, you know, you had the uh, Greeks, which were hell-bent, Against taking Israel down, you know, Judas Maccabees and his brethren and those that follow him because, you know, they weren't with um, bowing down to him, to them, the uh, Greeks, you know, who the, the, the power at the time. Then said Judas to the men, it's like in verse seven, and they saw the camp of the heathen that it was strong and well harnessed and compassed about with horsemen. And these were expert of war. OK, SWAT, so you're going to have, you know. Um, men that that they do that, you know, they they take down so-called terrorists. You know, this is what they do. All right, who knows, man? Green berets, all types of top military militia men. Then said Judas to the men that were with him, "Fear ye not, their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their assault. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with an army." Now, therefore, let us cry unto heaven, if peradventure the Lord will have mercy upon us and remember the covenant of our fathers and destroy this host before our face, that so all the heathen may know that there is one who delivereth and saveth Israel. Then when you read down, it speaks about how we got the best of them. So they joint battle, right? Reading down, jumping down to verse 14. No, let me read through, you know, get the scenery. That's so all the heathen, verse 11, may know. All right, I read that. Verse 12. Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them. Wherefore, they went out to, to the camp to battle. But they that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. So they joined battle, and the heathen being discomfited, fled into the plain. You see? So that's the Lord laughing at these devils through us. All right? He's giving us that power. He's going to give us that power. Behold, all they that were instanced against thee, verse Isaiah 41 and 11 again, shall be ashamed and confounded. Ashamed. <laughs> be disconcerned. Be disappointed. And confounded. Alright. To be humiliated. They shall be as nothing. And they do, and they that strive with thee. Shall perish. Thou shalt seek them. And shall not find them. Even them that contend with thee. They that war against thee. Shall be as nothing. And as a thing of naught. For I, Yahweh, thy power withhold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, 
and ye men of Israel, I will help thee, saith Yahweh, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I make thee a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chess. You know? And um, I was actually looking into it. Which uh, the scripture itself breaks down what a threshing instrument does. But a threshing instrument doesn't have... Um, within it is is it's not like sharp objects within it you know that's why the lord said he's going to make us threshing instruments having teeth okay teeth is what tooth edge mouth okay which you use teeth to devour so the most high is going to allow us to devour esau edom and all those that come against us man thou shalt fan them and the wind shall carry them away and the whirlwind shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice in Yahweh. You know? And hey, when you watch that uh, movie Chronicles, at the end, you know, one of the dudes kind of went rogue. You had cops and everybody, you know, surrounded him. You know, what did he do? He waved his hand at the cops and everything just, just, just flew back. You know, in that movie Chronicles. You know? And that's how it's going to be for us, man. You know, it's just some quick in the spirit. Um... Thou shalt scatter them, and thou shalt rejoice in Yahweh, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Okay? So that's just uh, some, uh, going into uh, Psalms 34 and 12. So with that, Shalom.